Hello, welcome. My name is Leon Chisholm. Today we want to look at visioning. And visioning is really creating mental images that guides one's behavior. Now, when you take the Bible for example, in Hebrew chapter 11 and verse 13, there's an interesting verse. It says that the pioneers of the Bible, they did not see the promise. In fact, they died not seeing the promise. However, they could see it from afar off. Now I wonder, do they know something that we don't? Why is it that these pioneers would give up their life, give up all their possessions for a particular promise? But the verse really explains it. They could see the promise. And that is what we want to talk about as we talk about visioning, where we are creating mental images that guides one's behavior. Now, there's something that we need to know about the mind. It is very powerful, but at the same time, the mind is very silly. Now, let me just indulge you for a minute. I'd like you to just say this and repeat after me. P-O-T-S, POTS. P-O-T-S, POTS. P-O-T-S, POTS. P-O-T-S, POTS. Now, what is the first thing you do when you go to a green light? Now, if you have heard this before, you will think for a while and then say go. But if not, you will certainly, or in most cases, say stop. No, we did not use the word stop in the conversation. And why is it that your mind turned up with the word stop? Well, let's see, that is what I mean by saying that our mind is powerful, but at the same time, it can be very silly. Because the word pot, pots, when you reverse it, it actually spells stop. And what your mind did was just quickly reverse the word. And I can guarantee you, you will see a big stop sign somewhere in your mind. No, immediately your mind reverse the word and we say, what do you do when you go to a green light? Well, normally we don't refer to the stoplight as a green light. We'd rather say a stop sign or a stoplight. So immediately your mind say, well, what do you do? And all it comes up with is stop. But the truth is we weren't even using the word stop. And that is why I say we can, that is why I'm saying that your mind is powerful, but at the same time, it can be very silly. Now, you see, anything that you feed your mind, your mind will act upon it, whether it is true or not. But here's what I want us to learn. You see, we do think in pictures, and when we can create a particular picture, our mind will act upon that particular picture. Now, look at this. Supposing I should say to you, I want you to compare 13 miles as against 20 miles and really look at the distance. Most In most cases, your mind will go blank because there is no picture. Always in 13 miles as against 20 miles. Now it's a totally different case. If I should tell you that, you know what? I want you to move from Kingston to St. Catherine. Or if I should say, you know what? I need you to go from Kingston to Montego Bay. Right away, you start to have a picture in your mind. You start to see the trees, you start to see the road, and all of that. And right away, you can explain to me in vivid terms which is longer and which would be the more difficult task. And that is what I mean by say we think in pictures. Now, if I should ask you, describe your fridge. Immediately, a picture jumps to mind. You start to see the color, whether it's gray or black or shine. Now, when we think about the mind, immediately we'll go blank because there is no picture. So if we really want to move ourselves, then we have to start to create that image in our mind. Just like the pioneers did in the Bible. They could see the city. They believed the promise. But they could vividly see where they were going. Even though they weren't there yet. They were able to create that mental picture. And it is that mental picture that guides their behavior. Once you create that mental picture, then your mind starts to act upon it. Because remember, your mind does not know what is true as against what is not. In fact, an experiment was done with some Olympic athletes. And what they did was to hook up these athletes to some machines and tell them to run the race in their minds. Now, what was interesting from this experiment is that even though these athletes were running the race in their mind, all the muscles in their body fired up just as if they were actually running the very race. They were sweating just the same. 
they were breathing just the same and they were, it seems as if they were actually in the very race but since most of us might not be Olympic athletes let me share something else with most of us at one time would have experienced now have you ever been dreaming sometime in your bed and in your dream you were drowning now what tends to happen as soon as you awake you realize that you're out of breath you're breathing short you feel a fear but the truth is you weren't drowning it was all in the mind but that mental picture allow your body to react just as if you were actually drowning and that is what I mean when we say hey we think in pictures and once there is a picture we will move toward that picture in fact our body will just take over it's as if we are on autopilot and speaking about all of that autopilot you see once you are able to create that mental picture we will act as if we are an autopilot because it will draw you to that goal that you need to get it will draw you to that object that you are aiming for you see when we are acting on autopilot even if something come and push you off course what autopilot does is after after all the turbulence after all the push it will come back to the level that it was set and that is what will happen to us when we create a mental picture of where we are going because that now start to guide our behavior but many people will ask you know does imaging really work and i'll share my own experiences you know back in my days when i was in high school I set a particular standard. Well, it wasn't a very high standard, but it was a standard nonetheless. My thing was, I wasn't too fussy about coming first or seemingly overly brilliant. My thing was, once I get about 70, then that will be a good enough average and I'll be fine. And the truth is, I spent six years in high school and I've never averaged above 70 because 70 was stamped and the frame of my mind that was where the picture was i went to a college a couple of colleges at that and i still keep getting past and my average just never went above 70. and then one day in fact i was reading this particular book and it started talking about desire and creating the image of what you want and i say you know what i enter this particular university and say you know what all my life I've been averaging 70 and below, just getting past. I'm going to change all that. So I say, you know what? I want an average of above 90. Went to the first class, met the first teacher, and say, you know what? First thing I want you to tell me, how do I score above 90 in this particular class? She explained to me, and that was stamped on my mind. Not only that, I put it up over my bed. Each night I was going to sleep, I would look up and the average was there and it moved from the wall into my mind and the truth is after the five courses at this particular university i have an average of 91 no i didn't get any brighter i didn't get any more resources all that changed was now that i have a mental picture working with and this mental picture was guiding my behavior so everything surround this mental picture and once you have that mental picture then you are going to move towards it because it now becomes a part of your subconsciousness in fact it start moving you rather than you moving it and that is why i'm encouraging everyone to get a solid picture of what they want and once you embed that in your subconsciousness this mental picture will take over and guide you towards the target instead of you guiding yourself towards the target you know in proverbs it is said that without a vision the people perish now those bible writers know a lot more than we do because the truth is if there is no vision the people will indeed perish i also want to share this most of us dream but within our dream we need to have a vision you see a dream is static it's something that I wish for. It is something that I hope for. It's something that I want to happen to me. Interestingly, a vision is slightly different and a whole lot more powerful. 
Because every person within the scriptures or anywhere else that had a vision, this person becomes an active participant. And this is what happens when you have a vision. It's not just something that you see. It is something that you are drawn towards and you have the actions to follow. So I would encourage everybody, create a mental image of who you want to be, of where you want to go, and then repeat it as often enough. See it as often enough on the picture frame of your mind, on the television screen of your mind. And when you keep seeing it often enough, and not only that, see it with a lot of emotions. And the repetition and the emotion will bury that picture in your subconsciousness. And once it is buried in your subconsciousness, then it is the mental image that now is going to lead you towards a target, towards that objective, towards that goal. And I'll guarantee you that your life will be radically different if you are able to have a vision to create that mental image that will guide your behavior. I want to thank you for listening. I'll catch up with you some other time. Blessed love.